Hello, this is Solar PV TV from Abu Dhabi from World Future Energy Summit. And we are again in our Solar Future Today panel discussion. And this time the panel discussion is moderated by Tony Silva, the author of Solar Trillions and Clean Disruption. So Tony, I give you the floor and I will give the microphone to our distinguished speakers. Thank you. Thank you, Tomas. Um, well, thank you for the invitation to the show, and uh, thank you for this superstar panel for making the trip and being here on this panel. Um, first of all, I'm going to ask you, each one of you, instead of me uh, introducing you, why don't we take 30 seconds each and let's introduce one another, and let's start from here. Uh, just a quick introduction. Um, what are you doing in solar? Who are you? All that good stuff. MTS Matab, I'm based out of Dubai, uh, responsible for the Middle East and North Africa. Uh, Air Liquid, uh, we are uh, very much into uh, pushing the cost for renewable energy in the in worldwide. Hi, my name is Nancy Fund. I'm founder and uh, managing partner at DBL Investors, which is a venture capital firm in San Francisco. The DBL stands for Double Bottom Line. We invest for both financial return and social return. Alex Leitman, I'm the chairman of Everblaze, which makes innovative solar platforms that combine solar with telecommunications and storage, uh, lighting, security cameras for cities, and also has two new uh, form factors for solar for farmers. My name is Matthias Altieri. I'm from Minerva Capital Partners. It's an, um, a Luxembourg-based um, private equity fund. We are investing in renewable energies early stage, so we are starting in... Uh, I have a fund raised for um, seed financing and development. Uh, good evening. My name is Browning Rockwell. I am the executive director of the Saudi Arabian Solar Industry Association, SASIA, one of the co-sponsors of the event this evening. I'm also the founder of the Solar GCC Alliance, which is a federation of trade associations in the solar industry across the GCC and MENA region. Hi, my name is Abdul Mahsin Shaibi. I am from Saudi Arabia. Uh, I am the executive partner of Dar Global Solar. It's a local Saudi company established to look after uh, the industrial chain. Uh, and we are heavily involved in the solar uh, power uh, solutions uh, as uh, turnkey solutions. Let's stay there um, and let me ask you one question for everyone in the panel. What do you think about the show and was there anything that surprised you about the show? Any surprises, positive or negative, uh, about the show? Let's start this way. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've been to the show since the original show. Yeah. And, um, I've seen it kind of evolve. I would say not so much a surprise, but I'm encouraged to see the number of people who are coming here continue to come here in spite of the fact that the market has yet to develop in a way that is recognized the way the rest of the world, other markets in the world are, are developing uh, with, a, with clarity and definition. But uh, I, I do see a very, a very good trend here. We have an exciting group of people, um, been ex excellent turnout. Um, I just see it as a positive trend. Uh, I'm, I'm one to manage expectations and not hype the market. Uh, there, there's a reality to this market. It has taken many years since the first announcements were made by Mazdar and other groups, but it's not unlike the basically the development curve you might find in other markets. So mm. we have to look at it from the perspective that maybe there were announcements made somewhat premature, but we now see it takes a while. Whether it's Europe, the United States, you know, it, it, it does. It takes that. It takes a while to get that hockey stick effect that we look at in business models, and that's what we're. We'll see here, hopefully, this is a dynamic market. They certainly have the money to develop uh, renewable policies. There's a lot of other issues going on right now, whether it's the price of oil in a global market or, you know, the drop in just the, the I think it's the cheapest time in the, in, 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 to look at looking, look at solar and renewables. So, you know, it's interesting to see the number of people. I think tomorrow, this is the first day, uh, there were not, not as much of a crowd here as we would have had because there are a lot of other activities happening. So yes. the next couple of days will be a telltale of, of where this is all going. But I'm encouraged to see the level of people that are here and the networking that's going on. So we'll take it from there. Excellent. So what Sorry, do you think I about the show? I was looking up in my iPhone because I made a nice picture of today. It's a green <laughs> nuclear provider. And their claim was nuclear power is a green energy source. The what energy source? <laughs> a, a nuclear power is a green energy source. Right. I was so negatively 
impressed yeah. how people, how a father or mother still could think that nuclear is a source of energy. That it's something which I was uh, completely surprised. Right. Positively speaking, I see a lot of young people, a lot of young people. We are on a panel, except for the lady. We are old men. I'm in solar since 10, 10 years in the, in the business. And um, I'm surprised that a lot of young people are interested in stepping into this business. Positively surprised. Yes. Yes. Good. Good. Alex? Well, this is my first time here, and so I and I can sympathize that you always wanted to be bigger and better. But I just I was surprised at how huge it is, and the quality of the exhibits and the the sessions, and also the some really large companies here making some bold statements about uh, powering their their industries through renewable power, and it, it takes more than words, but some pretty, you have to start with words and, and awareness, so um, I was very encouraged by that, and what I really loved was just driving through the city and seeing banners on the street about solar and storage and, and uh, sustainability, um, as though they were advertising a, a football game, so I think, uh, you know, I just, I, I was overwhelmed by that in, 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 a, in a very positive way. Excellent, thank you. Alex? Well, Tony, I think this is a, a wonderful place to view the clash of civilizations, but it's not a Huntington type West versus Islam kind of clash uh, because everyone's getting along here, but it's a clash of the fossil fuel civilization versus the new emerging civilization. And it's, I think they, they've lost the war of ideas because the show is filled with models of oil rig, models of oil rigs next to little models of wind turbines. I saw four of those out there. And you know you've lost when to go and pedal your, your oil, you have to put renewable things next to them. And it's funny to me that a, a nation which has a million people and seven to 10% of the world's oil reserves has at least 20% of the show floor covered with uh, a touting not its oil reserves, but the solar that's going to come and the technology that's going to come through Mazdar. So Mazdar is advertising 100% freedom from taxes at the individual level, 100% freedom from taxes at the, at the corporate level. I don't know how as a nation you show any more support for solar and for renewables than that. That's putting your money where your mouth is. And it's fascinating to me that the United Arab Emirates is more focused on renewables and on solar than the United States, which has so much more to gain from it. And I think it shows you the value of nationalizing oil companies, because here the government is above the oil companies rather than below the oil companies. And so I guess what I see is, as uh, most interesting is that um, since 85% of the world's oil is in national oil companies, it gives me hope that there's no way for the oil companies to stand in the way. They've lost the battle, and this is the, we're seeing the, the uh, artifacts of the future. I only wish that there was someone like the French uh, social uh, philosopher, public intellectual Baudrillard, who wrote about the desert of the real, to come and talk about how surreal is this energy Disneyland. So one of the more amusing things I saw is an oil company promoting its vision of the future by having a solar panel cleaning robot. And another oil company, we saw the booth together, is sponsoring its eco-marathon in the Philippines for solar-powered cars. And so it's almost like the only way the oil companies can have something to talk about is by talking about something that has nothing to do with what they do as their core business. Interesting. Because it relates to solar. And so this could be the, basically the world's greatest exhibition of greenwashing propaganda. And I love it, because it means <laughs> the ideas of solar have won. To go back to the question, what do you think about the show and what surprised you, positively or negative? I think uh, I can only talk about two specific points. Yeah. Um, the first thing is, I would like to say the education level of the region has come up so high. I was sitting on my booth and there was a 12-year-old came with his mom and say, well, could you explain to me the difference between the, um, the conversion efficiency from a hydrogen fuel cell and the PV cell? And what are the differences? Wow. So this type of question from a 12-year-old, imagine that in 2020 when we have 
or 2030, when you have 100% of the world with solar, what will happen? So I think the ingredient is there. Yeah. The, uh, it, it, what it tells me that the UAE government has put a lot of effort in the school and the education level, and, and I see that in Saudi as well, and I see that in Mazdar, to train the young mind to ask those right questions and uh, you know, reward them accordingly because you see the schools are being awarded uh, at the Sheikh Zayed Prize. So that's, that's very, very, for me, a, a right way forward. Uh, the second thing, which is more concrete business-wise, is that I, I, I absolutely was thrilled to see Mohamed al Sisi as well here. And, um, uh, to, uh, and basically, he mentioned that he stick to the plan of having four gigawatt of renewable energy in the next three years. And uh, he confirmed that to a, to a standing ovation crowd in, in the morning. And Sultan Al Jaber, which is the behind the mind and the and the, the brain of Mazdar, he said multiple times that the don't worry about fifty dollar oil price or twenty dollar or thirty dollar. This machine in Istanbul will do it, and it's going forward. So I, I take this very positive. Got it. Um, keep that. Let, let me ask you another question. Um, you know, since the year two thousand, solar has grown on a compound CAGR, compound annual growth rate. Of 43 percent, right? And I argue that that may even accelerate. Um, so, what do you think we should do? Products, services, in your specific experience and markets, to accelerate that growth of solar? Well, I mean, as we know, any any sector requires three things: the policy, a product, or technology. And the, and the financing mechanism. So, uh, and you have to look at the market differently as well. As Browning was mentioning, this market has not as the level of um, the maturity in Japan is different than here. So if you ask me how to integrate solar more in Japan or in the US or Europe, it should be much more application driven. I would like them to install solar on the car, on the motorboard. Uh, there, was, there, there, there will be a plane flying. Why not all the planes are mandated to use solar at some point of time? So, People at the day-to-day -day life going from rooftop to inside the roof. This is what I like to see. And I think this will happen um, uh, in, in, in a very uh, developed economies as well as the uh, not-so-developed economies like uh, if you look at the, um, uh, the Nigeria and other places where the, um, uh, the off-grid solar uh, doesn't make, uh, you know, the, you cannot connect them to the grid. So the grid, uh, four or five cents is gone. So those people have to use the, uh, the island mode. So that, that will go. In this region, what we need to have, we need to have absolutely the large-scale program uh, when you talk about the Middle East. Uh, as you mentioned, the technology, there is not much work needs to be done. It's unstoppable. And I, I, I share with you the, uh, the, the cost curve that you have seen, the 25 cents per watt. It will happen because we see in the semiconductor industry what happened. And I think you're talking about the Swanson effect, which is basically you, uh, you double your capacity and uh, as well as the uh, cost of uh, the production will go up by half, and it's happening. We, uh, so I, I'm not worried about the technology. People yeah. always find it. The policy side of it here, they have to really tie that into the job creation, which is the major, um, the, the major concern here. So uh, the, the step that Egypt is taking, uh, the other countries must push forward. So that's what they need to do. The second thing, as you were mentioning, is that you haven't seen the rooftop quite a bit. And that needs to happen because uh, the reason that you don't see because energy is heavily subsidized here. As government control, as you mentioned, the oil company, they can absorb the any cost differences or subsidization of the cost. But it's very hard to push that at the, at the, uh, at the local level. You see what happened in Jordan when the price was raised. Uh, there was the, so uh, somehow the government has to educate the people and make the solar in such a way that they can forget about the, uh, the grid and make it a more of a decentralized version. And that needs to happen. And I think that will come. But if that comes in, the Middle East will follow the exact same roadmap of the rest of the world. Got it. Thank you. Nancy? So the question What do we need to do to accelerate this yeah, transition? Sure. I think, obviously, the costs coming down is a huge way to continue um, acceleration. But I would agree. I, I think policy is very important wherever you are because in most places, uh, traditional fossil energy is subsidized, yes. and so you can't you can't 
uh, combat an incumbent as a new entrant without some uh, policies that ease that transition. And they don't have to be major policies, but they do have to start to level the playing field. And things like in, in the states, um, investment tax credit, net metering, RPS, um, renewable portfolio standards, those are, those are building blocks that are resulting in more and more solar being installed, and, and they're working. And, and they're not expensive, and and they don't have to be permanent. So I think that 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 you really you have to pay attention to policy, uh, because I'm not surprised to hear you say that traditional energy is, is subsidized, because that's pretty much everywhere. Yes. Um, and I think that takes care of a lot. Uh, you can also create incentives. Like I just saw today a chart. In Norway, electric vehicle adoption is like almost, I mean, it's just the slope is so steep and it's its 100% because of policy. There's no sales tax if you buy an EV, you get free parking, you get free ferry s service. So um, in addition to being a terrific way to drive and making a pleasing consumer experience, which is what obviously Tesla has done, um, you can tweak it with policy and accelerate growth uh, in a very significant way. Excellent, thank you. Alex? Well, I'm pleased to say that one way to accelerate it is to buy your book, Clean Disruption of Energy and Transportation. <laughs> uh, I actually have bought and given away over 100 copies of Tony's book, and it's actually my way of filtering friends. If people don't read the free book and talk to me about it, I don't want to be friends with them. Um, another thing is actually to support the, the movie, Solar A Convenient Truth. There should be a solar documentary. Solar is one of the great success stories of our time, and the, the news was out last week, and a lot of people were jumping for joy, that in the United States, solar jobs grew by 22%. There's now 180,000 people employed in solar in the United States. It's twice as many as in coal, and coal is dying while solar is booming. And fossil fuels cost us $865 billion a year in health costs. Mm -hmm. So if solar just takes the facts that are there about the health improvements, takes the job numbers, and just keeps saying these things, there's a lot of support. But if you're actually seeing it every day, all around you all the time, then it becomes the new normal. And I think that that's what cities can do. Uh, one last thing, uh, my city, Santa Monica, built a new parking garage that has solar I'm sorry, it has electric car charging on every single spot. And it used to be, it was easy, because um, uh, my girlfriend and I have a, a Fiat uh, 500e. It was easy to find a spot. Now, you have to get there early and drive the whole garage to find a spot, because it's filled with it. So there was a Kevin Costner movie, Field of Dreams, and the line was, if you build it, they will come. And this is what municipalities are learning. If you build electric car charging spots, then people will come and fill them. Come. And I think the electric car, as you point out, is the adjacency for solar, because then you go, oh, wait a minute, I have an electric car, why don't I just put up a solar awning, a solar garage, put solar in the city? And so we have these, if you look at evolution, there's a co-evolution of, of an ecosystem. Right. Things evolve in an ecosystem. And the right ecosystem is electric vehicles, electric scooters, solar, self-driving vehicles, and that's what's going to win this whole revolution. That's what I meant by product innovation. And then we talked about stopping fossil fuel uh, subsidies and also about policies that don't uh, go against clean energy. Um, what do you think? One, one very important thing we did not mention. Yes. Solar and the sun is free of charge. The, you are a producer of energy and you don't have to pay the, the main resource. Except in Spain. No. Yeah, the energy resource I mean, is free. And, and what, what you really need in the world is countries like Germany, where policy made the first step. Co uh, companies like E.ON took a decision to completely stop and step out of fossil nuclear. Yes. So you, you need people like Bill Gates in the IT sector we need people in solar, we need people in, in energy. And then I think very important for us as an investor is we love, I'm an electronautical engineer. I yes. love simple, straight processes. Yes. And once we come to America, which was very, very slow, if you imagine to the potential America have and still have, yeah. it, it's, 
a portion, marginal, what they could do. And, and therefore, you need somebody, you need advocates, advocates like Tomasz, like yeah. we are sitting here on the board, that we multiply our ideas, our vision, our processes, our money. Got it. Thank you, Browning. Um, <clears throat> I have uh, three, just listening, I have three things that come up that I think would be very, very important and could be very helpful in this region. One would be like in any market, they need to develop or, uh, a solar champion in the region. Somebody who can be viewed like any industry, whether it's Elon Musk in the electric car. What, what, why did people rally about it? Because it was an interesting story about an individual who created an industry, basically. That's what needs to be done in this region. We don't have, we have a lot of interest from around the world, but there's very little, if you look around and say, who is from this country other than my, my associate Abdul Muksin, yeah. but real commercial leadership beyond the government that can step up and say, this is very important, this is an area, this is a commercial opportunity, as well as a you know, social opportunity. So that's what's really needed right now, and it's, it's hard to find. There's a lot of, whether Mazdar, I, you know, Mazdar's doing great things, but we need commercial leadership in the region, somebody that's beyond the multinationals that are coming in and coming out, somebody you can stand up and say, this person is leading the way, they're setting an example. So that is lacking right now, right. in many ways. The second thing I think is we need to, much like in the United States, I look at the solar industry in the region as, as something like a dot-com boom can occur in this region. The young, educated, whether it's male, female, coming back from being educated all over the world, engineers, very highly trained, are looking for interesting opportunities, entrepreneurial and otherwise, to put their minds to work. What we've seen in the United States with this, we've created some wonderful companies by engaging these people, giving them the opportunity, and this environment here, you could do the same thing. These are the types of things that for, for generations now, it's been merchant families controlling the business, which will still be there like anywhere in the world. But the entrepreneurs have created opportunities that are just magical when you think about it. Yeah. You look at what's happening in the demand economy that we have today. Uh, from uh, Saudi Arabia perspectives, let me talk about Saudi Arabia because yes, I'm more please. involved in that rather than speak global. Um, putting um, legislations, regulations, policies in the right track from the beginning as investing into uh, putting the right systems, uh, the system, it works uh, better for the future. Uh, Saudi Arabia took like three years so far just to put systems together um, to um, make sure the future program when it's launched is going to be proper and right. From now, um, uh, an education, uh, from education perspectives, uh, there is uh, so many um, topics about uh, solar energy. It's been uh, teaching in schools. Yeah. Uh, the young generation, they are very much uh, brought uh, up now uh, nowadays with the learning uh, knowledge of what uh, uh, solar energy is all about. Because if I uh, recall, um, uh, many years back, Saudi Arabia was not aware about any environment issues or, clean or uh, solar energy and so on. Now it's been teaching in schools for the young generation to consider, uh, you know, and to really be uh, aware of uh, the, you know, uh, shifting into clean energy and alternative energy. Um, uh, so if the system put in, in the right track, I think um, things will accelerate better and, and, and in a proper manner. Thank you. Excellent. Um, so I'll ask one last question. I, I thank you so much for being here. Um, one last question. Um, imagine that we're back here 2020, the year 2025 years from now. Um, according to my book and according to my perspective, we're going to have God parity. Uh, by 2020, solar on the rooftops is going to be cheaper in hundreds, thousands of markets cheaper than the cost of transmission. So what happened with Eon, uh, in which they spun off centralized generation because it doesn't make any sense, financial sense. Um, that's my perspective. If we come back here in 2020, uh, where do you see, what do you think you'll be saying in 2020? Where is the market going to be in 2020? Just a quick answer. I think uh, we're going to see lots of uh, big change uh, towards 2020. Uh, like, uh, let me give an example now, like UAE, let me speak. They won the expo in 2020. Now you see them from today, they are um, uh, constructing so many projects, which is 
uh, you know, into env uh, friendly environmentally, friendly, uh, shifting to solar, building the new uh, building, uh, applying uh, BIPV, thinking of the new uh, design of BIPV and many things. I think we're going to see uh, a lot of uh, um, advanced uh, acceleration, uh, acceleration of uh, applying such projects uh, and it's going to be a shift of error. Uh, and this is similar in Saudi Arabia, I think. Uh, in a few years, we're going to uh, see a big uh, improvement. Uh, in Saudi Arabia, if I take, once the things put in place, it's like avalanche. Things go as they wanted yesterday. So mm -hmm. they will really apply it fast, and it's going to be so much advanced. Thank you. Um, that, that's a tough question to answer, a uh, crystal ball. But, um, you know, I say they say the, the, uh, the future is today. They have yes. the opportunity to execute. It's here and available to us. So 2020, uh, it, you know, I think it'll go either way. And you're going to look at a market that will explode and develop. This could be an epicenter of, of renewable and solar development. They certainly have the, the, if they're smart, they've got the money to invest in these renewable technologies and have an interest in the future of those technologies, whether it's ownership or investment. They can kind of balance their bet, you know, bet on both sides mm -hmm. of the equation. Um, or they can be overtaken by other, other events around the world where Africa or India, which can explode and take the, take the market away. They're at a unique point right now, and I think it's, uh, it's theirs to lose because they are in a situation where the world is kind of focused in this market. They, uh, they're in a kind of a, a flux in the, in the way with oil and everything else that's going on. There's some very important decisions to be made in the, in the next years ahead, and it depends on where this is shifting that I think this region can become a very dominant player, not just in terms of solar and, and renewable implementation, but in terms of around the world. They have the money to invest. I mean, you'd be surprised we have sovereign wealth funds in this region, whether it's in Saudi yes. Arabia or here in Abu Dhabi. They have tremendous investments all over the world. They could do the same in renewable technologies and be a very prominent player in that and influence that. But that's a decision that has to be made. And I think it's theirs to lose right now. When I started in photovoltaics, the um, watt peak price was at fifteen, eighteen dollar. Yes. Now, and looking forward, I don't know where the price will be. However, I have a view that young people today, which simply started uh, on university, they go to the internet, they're looking for information. Which took me an hour drive by bus. I went to the to the, 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 the bibli bibliotheque or the library, yeah. um, I had to fill in formats. So it, it took me time and money to get information. And I think, and now I'm coming to the point, in a couple of years, people using energy, free, they, they don't know whether they have to pay or not. It's free of charge. And energy makes a country livable, though you can grow. Right. GDP is depending on energy and nothing else. So it means energy with solar will become easy access, free of charge, not completely. But the marginal cost is, is zero, yeah. Uh, right? Yeah. That is my view yeah. for the future. Yeah, excellent. Alex, uh, uh, 2020. So I've started uh, writing about the future in 1985. So this is my 30th year. I published over a million and a half words about the future with no major mistakes. So what I'm about to tell you <laughs> is infallible. Right. So, first of all, <laughs> uh, China will admit that it undercounts population, so the population of the world will be 8.1 billion people in as the year 2020, to... as opposed to, well, people say we have 7 billion now, it's actually 7.5. Yeah. Uh, so, it'll be 8.1 billion people, we'll have 6 billion people connected to the wireless broadband internet, and we'll have over 50 billion devices connected to the internet of things. And that will change everything because one of the things that we're going to be recording is how much energy we use, how much energy we produce. And one of the ways to be cool is to be a person who produces more energy than you consume. Nancy, 2020. 2020, I'd like to see the faith and the passion that millennials have for doing good and doing well at the same time applied to this, this sector and, and get get those young people uh, just starting companies uh, because they can take a playbook from all of the downstream solar companies that are all over the world 
and, and make a difference because I think it's, it's really important to connect solar to other dominant themes of our age. And certainly everyone that I've seen in the city is looking at their cell phone. And you're right, you can, you're going to be able to see your energy consumption on your cell phone. You're going to be able to turn off your thermostat or turn on your AC and, and you're going to be able to compete with your, your friends as to who's more energy efficient and, and look at your solar production. But to do that, you do need to start to disrupt, just like we disrupted the phone industry and the computer industry, it needs to happen here. And it isn't enough just to do large scale solar because um, the, the, the rooftop solar it captures people's minds, captures their, their aspirational view of the future, and, and really makes it personal. And it's not just the rooftop, it's in the garage powering their mm. EV. It becomes part of their world as opposed to some um, anonymous, centralized power source that they have no control over. And, and certainly millennials don't, don't want that model, and a lot of uh, older people don't as well. Uh, but it is important. So I would like to see in 2020, um, you know, complement the, the large-scale solar with that, that vibrant um, distributed rooftop solar uh, movement, and that will uh, create a lot of jobs that can't be outsourced, and it will also uh, educate your, your population about the benefits of personalized, clean, cheap energy. Excellent, thank you. One last answer. Well, as I said, it's much easier to predict things uh, 30 years down the road than uh, six years down the road, because you can be wrong. Or five, five. So I think we're yeah. five now. No, I mean, I was just thinking about the Back to the Future movie, I think you have seen that, where it was predicted Michael J. Fox in 2015 was on the, um, the rollerblading without the wheel. So, and it was powered, exactly. Yeah. And, and it, was, it was powered partly by solar. It didn't happen, but it's okay. Um, we have till October, and it will happen. Oh, it's it till October, okay, fine. Yeah. So I leave it on you. The we best. have flying cars also. Yeah, we have flying cars. There's uh, flying cars, okay. Yes, so, yes. okay, so I missed that. Yeah. So I think the, uh, I wouldn't give a worldwide perspective. So what I think this region, which the, uh, the current target, we have less than 1% of the energy mix by solar, and the, um, uh, the consensus is that it's somewhere between 5 to 20%. Yes. Uh, the solar in the energy mix, I think that will happen. Uh, I really believe that if you take the average of the region, they will achieve 20%, which is 20 times more than what they have today. So I think in itself, it's a, it's a major fit. But what is, we will see is that there's a lot of different type of innovation coming up from this region. Uh, I can think about the financial innovation, because the way, as you know, this country has been a structuring project for a very long time, the project finance. So you will see the innovation in the financial side of it, the uh, Islamic Sukuk, for example and which is very much in line with the, uh, the way the, the solar cash flow uh, that works. So we will see there's a lot of innovation there. Yeah. There's a lot of um, the, the countries like Saudi, uh, Qatar, they have excellent infrastructure uh, for developing large scale projects, manufacturing projects. So we will see that some of the innovation that is led by uh, sovereign fund uh, funded the, um, the research institute like Mazdar, Kaos University or Qatar Foundation, they will come to fruition. Yes. We will see that a lot of large projects will develop in this region, taking into account, have the competency of structuring large projects, panels that can withstand um, serious heat and dust and all those things, and they will be able to export. So I will see 2000, uh, uh, in, in 2020, we'll sit here and we'll say that which Saudi company is actually being a major exporter of technology outside. And that's what I'd like to see, and I think that will happen. Awesome. On that note, thank you so very much for being on this panel. Um, and thank you so very much for being part of the solar future today. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. And I refer to our traditional pumps for solar. Our chairman. Yes. All right. Thumbs up for solar. Yay. Solar. Everybody thumbs up for solar.